Hello all. Welcome to this video on vector calculus. Today I'll be talking about gradients of vector valued functions and matrices. Here we will be generalizing the concept of the gradient to vector valued functions also known as vector fields. F which is a mapping from the n dimension to m dimension space where n is greater than or equal to 1 and m is greater than 1. For a function f from the n dimension space to m dimension space and a vector x given by x1 etc xn transpose which belongs to the n dimension space, the corresponding vector of function values is given by f of x that is f1 of x etc to fm of x all belonging to the m dimension space. Writing the vector valued function in this way allows us to view a vector valued function f from the n dimension to the m dimension as a vector of functions f1 etc fm transpose where fi is given as a function mapped from n dimension space to one dimension space that map onto the set of real numbers. Therefore, the partial derivative of a vector valued function f from the n dimension space to m dimension space with respect to xi which is a real number where i varies from 1 to n is given as a vector which is dou f by dou xi that can be written as dou f1 by dou xi etc dou fm by dou xi which can be elaborated as limit h tends to 0 f1 of x1 xi minus 1 xi plus h xi plus 1 etc xn minus f1 of x by h etc limit h tends to 0 fm of x1 xi minus 1 xi plus h xi plus 1 etc xn minus fm of x by h all belonging to the m dimension space we know that the gradients of f with respect to a vector is the row vector of the partial derivatives. We saw that every partial derivative dou f by dou xi is a column vector. Therefore, we obtain the gradient of f that is mapped from the n dimension space to m dimension space with respect to x which belongs to the n dimension space by collecting these partial derivatives as d f of x by dx which is given by dou f of x by dou x1 etc dou f of x by dou xn which can be written as dou f1 of x by dou x1 etc dou fm of x by dou x1 etc dou f1 of x by dou xn etc dou fm of x by dou xn here we elaborated each of these terms in this vector now all of these are belonging to the m cross n dimension space now we'll see what a jacobian is the collection of all first order partial derivatives of a vector valued function f from the n to m dimension space is called a Jacobian. A Jacobian J is an m by n matrix which we define and arrange as follows. Jacobian is denoted by J or gradient of f with respect to x which is written as d f of x by dx which can be written as dou f of x by dou x1 etc dou f of x by dou xn. Now expanding each of these terms we get dou f1 of x by dou x1 etc dou fm of x by dou x1 and which is continued on to dou f1 of x by dou xn etc dou fm of x by dou xn where x is given by x1 etc xn and j of ij is given by dou f of i by dou xj Now, as a special case of this, 
a function f which is mapped from n dimension space to one dimension space which maps a vector x which belongs to the n dimension space onto a scalar possess a jacobian that is a row vector which will be a matrix of dimension 1 cross n now we will see how to calculate the gradient of a vector valued function through this example we are given the function f of x as ax where f of x is belonging to m dimension space a belongs to the m cross n dimension space and x belongs to the n dimension space we need to compute the gradient df by dx for this first we will determine the dimension of df by dx since we know that f is a mapping from n dimension space to m dimension space it follows that df by dx will have the dimension m cross n second in order to compute the gradient we determine the partial derivatives of f with respect to every x j so f i of x will be written as sigma j is equal to 1 to n a i j x j so dou f i by dou x j will be a i j now we will collect all the partial derivatives in the jacobian and obtain the gradient df by dx which is given as dou f1 by dou x1 etc dou fm by dou x1 which continues till dou f1 by dou xn etc dou fm by dou xn as we saw before each of these terms will be replaced by the matrix which is a11 to a1n and am1 to amn now this matrix belongs to the m cross n dimension space we will see an example of application of chain rule here we are asked to consider the function h which is mapped from a real number space to a real number space and h of t is given by f of g of t with f being a mapping from r square to r g being a mapping from r to r square and f of x is given by exponential of x1 x2 squared x consists of x1 x2 and g of t is given by t cos t t sin t we need to compute the gradient of h with respect to t since f is a mapping from r square to r and g is a mapping from r to r square we note that do f by do x will be belonging to the space 1 cross 2 and do g by do t will be belonging to the space 2 cross 1 the desired gradient is computed by applying the chain rule so dh by dt can be written as do f by do x into do x by do t expanding each of these we get do f by do x1 do f by do x2 and do x1 by do t do x2 by do t substituting value for each and expanding the terms we will reach at this result where x1 is t cos t and x2 is t sin t now we will see the case where we are asked to find out the gradient of a least squares loss in a linear model for this we are considering the linear model y is equal to phi theta where theta belongs to the d dimension space which is a parameter vector phi is belonging to the n cross d dimension space which is the input features and y belonging to the n dimension space which are the corresponding observations we are given the functions l of e as norm of e squared and e of theta as y minus phi theta we are asked to find dou l by dou theta and we will use chain rule for this purpose so l here is called the least squares loss function before starting the calculation as before we need to find the dimensionality of the gradient as dou l by dou theta belongs to the dimension of 1 cross d the chain rule will allow us to compute the gradient as dou l by dou theta which can be written as 
ഡോ എൽ ബൈ ഡോ ഇ ഇൻറ്റു ഡോ ഇ ബൈ ഡോ തീറ്റ വേർ ദ ഡീത്ത് എലമെൻറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗിവൻ ബൈ ഡോ എൽ ബൈ ഡോ തീറ്റ ദറ്റ് ഇസ് വൺ ഡി വിച്ച് ക്യാൻ ബ്രിട്ടൻ എസ് സിക്മ എൻ ഇസ് ഇക്വൽ ടു വൺ ടു എൻ ഡോ എൽ ബൈ ഡോ ഇ ഓഫ് എൻ ദറ്റ് ഇസ് ദി എൻ ടേം ഇൻറ്റു ഡോ ഇ ബൈ ഡോ തീറ്റ So this value belongs to a matrix so it will have two indices which is n and d we know that norm of e squared is e transpose e so we will determine do l by do e which is do of e transpose e by do e using product rule we can write it as do e transpose by do e into e plus do e by do e into e transpose which is e transpose plus e transpose giving two e transpose d e by d theta is as we saw here e of theta is y minus phi theta on substituting we end up with do of y minus phi theta by do theta that is minus phi which belongs to the n cross d dimension space therefore do l by do theta is given as on multiplying these two we get minus e transpose 2 phi so we will substitute for e transpose with the expression we saw before that is minus 2 into y transpose minus theta transpose phi transpose into phi where this term has a dimension of 1 cross n and this is belonging to the n cross d space so the result of this entire expression however belongs to the 1 cross d dimension space as we have defined it in the beginning now we look into gradients of matrices we'll encounter situations where we need to take the gradients of matrices with respect to vectors or it can be even matrices which will result in a multi dimensional tensor so these tensors are multi dimensional arrays that collect partial derivatives for example if we compute the gradient of an m by n matrix a with respect to a p by q matrix b then the resulting jacobian would be m cross n cross p cross q that is a four dimensional tensor j whose entries will be given by j i j k l which can be written as do of a i j by do of b k l since matrices represent linear mappings we can exploit the fact that there is a vector space isomorphism which is a linear invertible mapping between the space r raised to m cross n of m cross n matrices and the space r raised to m n of m n vectors therefore we can reshape our matrices into vectors of length m n and p q respectively the gradient using these m n vectors results in a jacobian of size m n cross p q here we are uh, visualizing the concept of gradient computation with a matrix with respect to a vector here we are interested in computing the gradient of matrix a which is of dimension 4 cross 2 with respect to a vector x which is of three dimension space we know that the gradient da by dx will belong to the dimension space 4 cross 2 cross 3 we follow two equivalent approaches to arrive here the first case is where we are collecting partial derivatives into a jacobian tensor the second case is we are flattening the matrix into a vector computing the jacobian matrix and reshaping it into a jacobian tensor now we will see an example of calculating gradient of vectors with respect to matrices here we are given the function f as ax where f belongs to m dimension space a belongs to m cross n dimension space and x belongs to the n dimension space we are asked to seek the gradient df by da here also we start by determining the dimension of the gradient which is 
df by dA that is belonging to m cross m cross n space. By definition, gradient is the collection of the partial derivatives. So df by dA can be written as dou f1 by dou a etc. dou fm by dou a. Here dou fi by dou a will belong to 1 cross m cross n space and fi can be written as sigma j equal to 1 to n a i j x j where i will vary from 1 to m and the partial derivative will be given by dou fi by dou a i q. This gives us the result of x q. This allows us to compute the partial derivative of f i with respect to a row of a which is given as dou f i by dou a i. This results in x transpose. Now that belongs to 1 cross 1 cross n dimension space. Dou f i by dou a where k is not equal to i if that is the case then the result will be 0 transpose. Now this is also again belonging to 1 cross 1 cross n space. Here we need to pay attention to the correct dimensionality. Now since fi maps onto r and each row of a is of size 1 cross n, we will obtain a 1 cross 1 cross n sized tensor as the partial derivative of fi with respect to a row of the matrix A. Now we will stack the partial derivatives and get the desired gradient as dou fi by dou a given by 0 transpose etc 0 transpose x transpose 0 transpose etc 0 transpose. Now this belongs to 1 cross m cross n dimension space. We will see another example where we will find the gradient of matrices with respect to matrices. Here we are given a matrix R belonging to m cross n dimension space and a function mapping f from m cross n to n cross n dimension space with f of r as r transpose r and k belonging to the n cross n dimension space. We need to seek the gradient dk by dr. For this we first write down the dimensions of the gradient which is n cross n cross m cross n which is a tensor. Moreover, since both are matrices, we can write it as dk pq by dr belongs to 1 cross m cross n dimension space where p and q will vary from 1 to n and where k p q is p q th entry of k which is equal to f of r. Denoting the ith column of r by r i, now every entry of k will be given by the dot product of two columns of r, that is k p q can be written as r p transpose r p, which is sigma m is equal to 1 to capital M r m p r m p. When we now compute the partial derivative dou k p q by dou r i j, we get sigma m is equal to 1 to m dou by dou r i j of r m p r m p. So this can be written as dou p q i j. Now dou p q i j has four cases. For the case where j will be equal to p and p not equal to q, the result will be r i q. For the case where j is equal to q and p not equal to q, the result will be r i p. For the case where j is equal to p and p is equal to q, the result will be 2 r i q and 0 for all the other cases. Here, p, q and j will vary from 1 to n and i from 1 to m. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.